Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another comparison review. Now we don't have Gregorio with us today. We have Mossy, a man you probably very well recognise from the screen, from the silver screen. He's a bit of an off-road demon. He keeps it quiet. Definitely he's not. Bit, he's been Definitely to the Jarvis not. School of Off-Road. He, he's superb off-road. So up my level's down here. You're S up here somewhere. Simply Mossy. not true. Uh, <laughs> I would describe my off-road ability as occasionally competent. Sometimes I stay on the thing. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to go out a few lanes, a bit of road riding. Basically, we want to know which of these adventure bikes is the best, you know, for, for different purposes, of course, because there's no one bike that does everything. I just want to put in on, uh, away. very, very different sorts of adventure bikes, these two. I've got extensive experience on yeah. both. Well, that's your own long term, isn't it? It is. And I went to the launch on it. I really like it. Don't get me wrong. Really rate it. But that has off-road ability in a pretty much different league to this yeah. one. Far behind our skill levels. Uh, without question, well. yeah. 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 Sorry, yeah. Go, go, do, you're all right. No worries. All right, morning. No problem. So in this video, we will be doing a bit of light lane work. We'll be doing a lot of road work. We've got a control tire. It's a Dunlop, I've forgotten what it is again already. It's a Trail Max Raid. Trail Max Raid. So we must say a massive thanks to Dunlop to provide in the, providing the rubber. So that takes out, you know, if we're going to go off-road, it's nice to have a control tire because a lot of bikes are more set up for road, off-road. These are 50-50 tires. So massive thanks to Dunlop for providing the tires. And uh, I think we should do it, mate. While it's not raining, we should don our kit and uh, go for a spin. Why? Well, hey. So I am going to start on the Tenere. Mossy's on the uh, on the V-Strom. That's actually your own, well, I say your own bike, Mossy. That, that's, that's your long-termer from Suzuki, isn't it? It is. I've had it since about May uh, last year, and I've done 9,952 miles on it. Bloody hell, a fair old few. I'm a very big fan. There's only one thing that irks me about it, and that's the fact that I left the womb too short a person. So I struggle a bit to get my feet down. You struggle to get your leg over, is that what you're saying? Well, getting on it's not so bad because I do have a trick method, but yeah, every time I come to a halt, I've got to make sure things like loose surfaces or uh, cambers don't catch me out. I'm amazed that I haven't toppled off it at a standstill. So I've never ridden a Tenere before. I swung my leg over this at Yamaha, rode it home. It's actually really impressive with this bike. I don't know how it's just slipped off my radar because I've, I really, really like it. I mean, I've ridden the 800D before, we've ridden the Trans out, but the Tenere, it's like the original, it's the OG, isn't it, of these sort of middleweight adventure bikes? Yeah, I think it's quite unique, you know. It's, uh, it's Adventure bikes are getting sort of bigger and more well-equipped, more expensive, more powerful. They're getting a bit excessive when it comes to off-roading. That has definitely been designed to take to the dirt. I mean, with the tyres we've got on today, the Dunlop Raids, and some ability, uh, if you want to see a Tenere being ridden marvellously well, look up Paul Torres. I think it's Paul Torres, actually. We're not, we're not going to be doing that in this video, Mossy, are we? I will never be able to do what that guy could do. But it just shows what ultimately the Tenere is capable of, you know? We're going to do a little bit of off-road today. It's just going to be some light laning. It's been raining all week, so it's probably going to be a little bit of mud involved. Uh, a couple of horses up front here, mate. They might be going to the lane we're going to, actually. They might be. We'll we beat them, we'll beat them. I should bloody hope so. <laughs> I, I, I said sort I of wasn't very good off-road, but I should be able to outrun the horses. If you can't beat a horse on one of these, you're in bother. Yeah, the riding position on a Tenere is, is very nice, actually. I must say the front of the bike seems really high and the rear sort of seems quite low. You know, you've got your bars are very, very high. You've got that lovely little TFT on it. It, it feels fairly slim as well, doesn't it? It's not a particularly wide bike, but it feels very, very sort of front, 
not heavy, but a lot of frontage with this bike. I think the fact that it is as slim as it is, John, just makes it just seem more nimble, lighter. You, you know, it just the, a riding position and just the general physical size of the bike, regardless of what it actually weighs, get a very influential over the feel, aren't they? Yeah, and of course it's got that lovely CP2 motor, 700cc out of the MT07, cross plane. It's sat. It's got a lovely little sound to it as well. Very sort of motard sounding almost. It's raining, Mossy. Bloody raining. It was lovely and sunny before we left. Bloody raining there. The first little lane is just up here on the right. So let's, uh, we've done a little bit of road, very light bit of road. We're gonna now do a little bit of light laning. I haven't been off-road for a long, last time I was off-road was on a Tiger 900 in Spain. <laughs> so a little, little bit different. You're not about to take me to some horrible end here, are you? Oh, no, no, Christ, no, I'm not going to go anywhere horrible. That looks quite good, actually. Man, it all looks good from a distance, doesn't it? It all looks good until you're on your ass. <laughs> So let's get cracking. We've got a little bit of a lane here. This is a little bit, little bit of mud, a bit gravelly. Nice, nice easy one to start off with. Just to oh, right, okay. get ourselves back into it. Uh, and am I likely to survive it, John? You will survive this. If you fall off on this one, we're, we're in big trouble. Do I need to retire from off-roading? You could probably even take this one sat down without too much, uh, too much issue. It's quite relevant, really, because uh, I must say, I'm not a massive fan of riding big adventure bikes or the, the heavier ones like this yeah. uh, when the going is a bit too tough, you know. On, on a route like this, I'm, I'm perfectly happy. Um, you know, th this is easy off-roading, isn't it? Oh, this, this, is, this is my sort of off-roading. If I bought an adventure bike, I mean, this is the idea of it, isn't it? If you're going on an adventure and you run out of tarmac, you want something which you can do a bit of gravel on, a little bit of light mud, but you're not going up hills, you're not, you know, you're not doing hard enduro. This, this is just perfect yeah. for these bikes, isn't it? It, I it must is say indeed. The Tenere, though, the Tenere's got a really nice feel, isn't it, when you're, when you're stood up on it. I've had a little play around with, with the levers and sort of angled them down a little bit because they're a little bit high, but... You're taking this a bit too seriously, I'd wager. I've been tinkering. But yeah, it's got a really nice field suspension. I think it's got about 200, 210 mil of travel on the suspension, I think. Front and rear. I think 200 on the rear, 210 on the front, if I remember rightly. But yeah, it's, but it's got loads of ground clearance, isn't it? It's got 240 mil of ground clearance. But yeah, it's just nice. I like this. Yeah, it's got quite a bit, nice little bit of pop from the engine on the Yam as well. It's got a real nice playful engine, isn't it, this, uh, this CP2 motor. Playful, that is such a good word, very good word. Um, I would like you to rate it again after you've ridden this, mind you. So we get to the top and then we'll do a little swap. We'll come back on the same bit of road, just as an initial impressions for this sort of light gravel lane. See, it's gone all gravelly now, so... Oh, that's a deep in your thought but you can definitely see Yamaha's brief with this bike was to make something which can go off-road on isn't it it's very much it's really nice feel to it yeah really nice feel to it I mean I, I would just love to do this thank you very much I'd love to do I'd love to do this all day long this sort of stuff it's a shame we haven't got more trails like this isn't it they go on for miles and miles and miles I mean I've done the coast to coast on a Tenere from the North York Moors over to the uh, the sort of coast in the Lake District and that are uh, really good on that Tenere. Just great adventure. We took about three or four days doing it. Yeah. I was I was on my arse a lot to begin with because I completely I completely and utterly overpacked. Had a ton of luggage on the back. Uh, and yeah, I, ju I just spoiled it. And I left it at one of the hotels and thereafter it was really good. It, that is the bike that I would choose to go around the world on, you know. I, d I did a trip, I did a trip to the Italian Alps once on a Feastrom 650 and a 690 KTM Enduro R. Oh. And each of them was really good 
uh, at, at certain environments. You know, the V Strom obviously a lot better on the road, bigger tank run, range more comfortable. Yeah. Uh, whereas the KTM came in with element off road. On that, I think you would get the best of both worlds. Bit of everything. You, yeah. I mean, look. You know, I, I rode up to the North York Moors on one from Gloucestershire. It's not a million miles, it's only 250 miles or so, but just easy. You know, it can do the distance. It, it lacks the sort of some of the comforts of the V-Strom, but if you're prepared to sacrifice a bit in that respect, absolutely brilliant. And you will get paid back as soon as you go off road. It certainly looks okay. the part, doesn't it? It really Big does. Style. It's becoming a bit of a cult bike. Um, I mean, look, the price is good. Not as good as it was originally, mind you. Yeah, and a lot of the Yamaha models have sneaked up. I don't know if it's Brexit. I don't know if it's Brexit, but they are they are sneaking up. I think the Suzuki's 10.5. I think that's 10.1. But that is the very base Tenere, the, the, the bottom of the pack one. I think all it's got is the, is the off-road. I don't know if that, I can't see that coming standard that aluminium bash plate could be wrong but i think that could be an add-on but everything else it's completely stock no quick shifter you know absolutely stock we've also got the some pyramid plastics accessories on here oh, we've got their good, little yeah. side deflectors yeah just to give if you're on the motorway stuff give you a bit of extra bit of you know, sort of leg protection so uh, yeah pyramid plastics bit of a shout out to those guys for providing these little beauties yeah just let me mention a few mods that i've had done to this Obviously um, the crash bars are not standard, crash are Crash bars. This is an essential change. This is the screen from the RE, the road-based oh, model. Oh, is it? Okay. Uh, oh, straight, okay. Straight on, world of difference. Yeah. The standard screen on the DE is not much bigger than a postage yeah. stamp. It's rubbish for protection. Uh, what else have I had done? Uh, I've got a tank bag on it and I normally run around with a load of hard luggage on it as well. Right, do you mind me having a go on it then? You're a bit precious about it. Yeah, well, <laughs> just don't crash I don't it. I don't mind you riding it all day. It's the <laughs> dumping it on the ground I'm bothered with. <laughs> I won't dump it, not down that lane anyway. Fucking old famous last words. Ah, oh, no, hang on a minute. This is where I get caught out. If I, uh, I tell you, it is tall, isn't it? It is tall, isn't it? It's much taller than this, isn't it? Much taller than this. I just have to get used to the idea of uh, getting on it. Yeah, that's not bad. Skiddy, skiddy seat. This feels much more squishy, a bit softer the suspension maybe, or on the V-Strom. You've lost your little, you lost your little knob. You lost your little nipple. I've got one in my backpack. <laughs> oh, an extra nipple. Ooh. It's a standard can. It sounds quite fruity. I thought they were a bit quieter than this normally. That sounds good. Quick shifter blipper, of course, standard on the V-Strom as well, isn't it? You have to pay a bit more money on the Yamaha for that. Apart from the uh, lack of cruise control, I think it's pretty much as equipped as you need it to be, you know? Though in saying that, that's, a, that's how the, these two bikes differ quite a bit, isn't it? There's a lot less equipment on this. You don't have traction, for starters. There's no, no traction. All you've got is ABS on that, basically. I don't think I don't think there's even any rider modes. Is there? It's just you know I don't think there's even any rider modes. It's a very very basic bike. Yeah, but that's part of its beauty, isn't it? It's just a, absolutely, a, absolutely. Da dare I say it's a bit of an honest John bike, you know? I love the lightness of this bike, man. Yeah, I must say you can. I know the I know the V Strom is two thirty kilos and the Tenere is two o five, and you you can you can. Oh, you can definitely you? feel it. Even on a even on a little gravelly lane, I, I can really feel that. It feels wider as well. It's definitely wider between my legs. It, it's a big bugger, no doubt about it. It's not a GS, but by the same token, it's uh, nothing quite as slim and as light feeling as this, is it? No, yeah, that definitely feels lighter, doesn't it? It definitely feels a bit easier to manage when you're on the the rough stuff. There's a danger, I'm telling you right now, of you not getting this back. <laughs> speak to Jeff, speak to Jeff. <laughs> yeah, I, re I, I rate them. Uh, I, I went on the launch of the Tenere and the Tenere World Raid. Really enjoyed both of them. And as I said, I did the coast to coast on one of these, uh, which was a, just another great experience, you know. But it was purpose-built for that. 
I mean, a lot, a lot of, I've tested one against the 790 KTM Adventures as well, but I still think this is quite a different sort of bike to those. Um, you know, it's just simple, basic stuff that's very, very effective. Yeah, I must admit, you know, even this short little bit we've done, if we were doing much more of this sort of uh, terrain, or even more severe than this, I'd definitely be uh, <laughs> trying to get back on the Yamaha, I think. And when I did ride this against the tenor, against the uh, Trans Alp, I said this was much more off-road focused than the Trans Alp. But again, the, the Tenere is another level above, isn't it? From a, if you want to do something off-road. I think it is, a, you know, it's a particular sort of adventure bike, isn't it, that, this Tenere? Uh, it, you know, it's designed with this sort of stuff in mind much, much more. I mean, I've been on much tougher stuff on the Tenere that I wouldn't even dream of doing on the V-Strom. Because an another thing is, I think this, this bike, and I know this from experience, is it's not bad to crash in it's terms of the da <laughs> well just in terms of the damage that cr that's caused to the bike subsequently yeah it, it's a Crash, lot better it crashes well it crashes well yeah and listen if you're going to go off road that is a very important feature um, yeah absolutely the, the thing that bothers me about all of these adventure bikes is particularly the v-strom and the trans and anything nice once you start putting a few cracks in the bodywork or denting the tank and ripping off bits here and there, you devalue it massively. It's not an enduro bike. And that's the beauty of these two, where they're 10 grand. I mean, that new Desert X Ducati, the rally, it's, 20, it's a £20,000 motorcycle and they're targeting it as a proper off-road machine. Who, who's got the money to, to blow 20 grand on a bike to do... To ruin it basically is what you're going to do isn't it these are much more better priced for that sort of thing if that's your bag uh, i would personally describe that as the easiest off-road that you could ever do well there's another one a bit further that way which could be a little bit softer but not not more soft than this but i think it'll still be okay we can always turn around can't we or, or attempt to turn around or scream start crying for our mothers I must say, I do like the dash on the uh, Tenere, that sort of vertically mounted TFT. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really nice finish to everything as well, I have to say. It's uh, surprised me, it surprised me how nice this is. Just because it's basic doesn't mean to say it's raw and uncomfortable and unrefined. That's it, isn't it? And you don't, you could argue, you know, you don't need all of those electronic aids. On a, on a, on a 800cc motorcycle, or 700 cc in this case you know what was this 68 horsepower something 70 horsepower 70 yeah you don't need all of that and you can just go off road without thinking hang on what what mode have i got it in have i got this turned off i'm in gravel mate you can just just do it don't you you don't have to worry just ride the bloody thing i tell you this feels very plush by comparison yeah you can tell this is uh that the suspension feels a bit harder isn't it it's a little it's, it is a bit less plush this is more geared, if, you, if you're a bit more serious about your off-road then I think the Tenere is the one isn't it out of the two but when it comes to the road stuff this is still a lot of fun though I mean it's not bad it's not bad is it oh easy yeah no no it's, you know you can still be uh, entertained you can still go a long way on it but it's more easy jet to this is BA yeah the seat's harder the seat's thinner isn't it again for off to make it a bit slimmer off-road and, and you can feel that Comfort is a real strong point on this bike. Uh, good protection now that I've fitted a bigger screen, nice ride position, plush suspension, excellent seat. Um, you know, if you told me to go to the south of France on it, and please do right now, uh, I wouldn't have any I wouldn't have any qualms at all. You'll take the V-Strom over the Tenere for that, would you? Uh, every time, but I wouldn't cry if I had to do it on the Tenere. That's its beauty. It can go green laning when the lanes are 500 miles away. Yeah, and I must say, even, even though it's only 68 horsepower, it's so punchy. Yeah, it's because of that, I was just about to say, because of that cross-plane engine, it's so punchy out the corner. It doesn't, you don't feel like it's less, and it's only another 10 horsepower, I think, the V-Strom, which is probably negated because of the extra weight, most of that, I guess. 
but it's uh, it's so punchy. It's not the throttle response. There's no maps. It's a little bit aggressive. The throttle response. It's quite. It's sort of similar to the A map, I'd say, on the uh, on the V-Strom. There. It's not that soft, is it? It's quite an aggressive little little bike. Yeah, at the uh, launch of the original Tenere, we we had a word with the designer, and he said, "Look, we made." Uh, a strong point about it not being too powerful you know we, we didn't want to uh, add any more than 70 horsepower it had to remain unintimidating manageable and just generally very friendly and I think I think he's achieved his uh, his aim there right if we go down here yeah uh, what do we expect on this one? It's similar, a little bit worse than what we just done, but not, but not, not too bad. A bit, a bit more little rutted bits. All right. I, I haven't I'm been down right here when it's. I haven't been there since it's really rained though, so. Okay. We could, like I say, we could turn around if we have to. That last bit sounded like a disclaimer to me. <laughs> we could turn around if we have to. <laughs> no, you'll you'll enjoy this, but if you don't, now to do with me because it's raised, <laughs> it's rained since. Blaming on the weather. This surface, I mean, oh man, I, I, I'd be, I'm prepared to go a lot faster, or would be, if it wasn't uh, anti-social. Where there's grip like this, it's absolutely fine. It's just, see this stuff ahead here. Uh, I've just got to, I've just got to be a bit more wary of it, you know. And I wouldn't like to go to Wales and get involved in some of the serious stuff on something like this. Are we going back by the way? Yeah, let's swap bikes and, and go back. Oh, it does suit you that, Mossy, it does suit you that. I mean, here's an example, right? This mud here, uh, I, I'd be a bit more wary of going through on the V-Strom. But this is, let's just shut this visor. Now, listen, I feel like really quite at home on this. <laughs> you can use He's gone, he's gone, look at him. Q, Q massive crash. To my left or right here? Uh, go left and wait for me because I'm a little way back now. Le left, I, yeah. I, I had to adjust my, uh, my visor. <laughs> that's my excuse. Oh, yeah. Yeah, go, go left I think at the end, mate. That's excuse <laughs> seven, that, isn't it? On the <laughs> I'm not keeping up list. It's right after that my shoelace came undone. I tell you what a good what a good system this car door system is, man. It's good, isn't it? I, I, it's really good. I've isn't just it? had mine fitted for the first time yesterday, and I can't believe the clarity. It's, it's the best in the come on. I've used the Senna's, I've used the other car door ones. This pack talk system is really good. Yeah, it's and actually now you brought it up, Moss, I wasn't gonna, but there's twenty percent off in the description <laughs> if you want to pick yourself one up. There's an affiliate link, of course. Uh, good motorbike, this man. I, I just, I just want to go and adventure somewhere on it. You know, I mean, the thing is that there are the right sort of trails in the UK to ride these things. You can do it. Yeah. You just, ideally, you need a guide. You know, he can adjust things to suit your ability, the bike, and your changing ability. You know, you start getting, you get a bit, a bit more confident, he'll take you somewhere a bit tougher, and vice versa, when you start getting knackered and you're, you're wobbling off or risking that, he'll make it easier. But, but it's even nice just coming out and just exploring these sorts of lanes and getting out here. I mean, you wouldn't be coming out on your sports bike, would you, you know? It's, it's, it's a lot to be said for these, these middleweight adventure bikes. Well, the, they are all year round bikes, aren't they? I mean, this this is my only form of transport. Yeah, this really, is what I it. use, and uh, it's it's fine and dandy. I'm glad you didn't ask me to clean it, by the way. <laughs> yeah, well, it's gonna it was gonna need cleaning after this anyway, mate. So uh... it looks like it's gonna it's done a Dakar. Right, let's give this. Some. Ah, a few puddles. A few... I'm washing your bike for you, must see in these puddles. Uh, I'll look forward to seeing the shine of the <laughs> chrome and alloy, shall I? The thing about the V-Strom is, I think the engine is great on the Tenere, but when you open the front, it's very, you, I know it's in the A mode, but it's got a real, it's got such a wealth of mid-range, isn't it, the, this, this motor on this bike. It's really, really something, I think. 
you know, it, it is a it is our top or fifth ge gear bait virtually all day long. Yeah, well, I've got it in fifth now, and it's so punchy when you just crack the throttle. Sort of overtaking must be a breeze on it. I tell you, these are nice little back roads, aren't they? It's lovely. This is where I blat around on the supermoto, the SMCR. It's brilliant. This blatting around all these. Would that involve breaking the law at any point? Oh, uh, not at all. These are all 60 mile hour as well, aren't they? So, you know, if, if, the, if both wheels were on the ground while I was doing it, I'd be completely legal. What a really pleasant route. Yeah, it's nice. It just, uh, it makes a change, doesn't it? To pick a back route, just take it easier, enjoy the scenery, not stress yourself. Uh, you know, I think we go everywhere on, uh, main routes don't we and often don't see the full potential of life i mean motorways jesus i've become allergic to them i i, I absolutely hate motorways right see this on the gravel here I, i'd be i'd be less inclined to do that on the v-strom is that because you've done more with it do you think or just the feedback you're getting from the bike it's 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 the latter it just it instills much more confidence it it feels as though it's been as it actually has designed to to deal with it you know yeah it feels like it's a little bit more connected to the road doesn't it it's a little bit of a, a, a wafty feel to the v-strom where the suspension's a bit softer a what sort of a wafty feel a wafty feel a bit of a what wafty on feel earth? what on earth are you saying <laughs> sir it's for wafters it, it's 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 mushy isn't it by comparison it's a little bit mushy yeah it's, it's a little bit it's, mushy by comparison it's, it's, you're, it's you're big, feeling a bit less it? through the tyres what's going on aren't you yeah. it's a bit vaguer it's, it's, yeah it's a much more of it. There's no such word as Vega. Detention. Detention. See me in my office. I mean, these tyres and these bikes are like perfect for these sorts of lanes, aren't they? Absolutely ideal. Even if you don't want to go full off-road, you just want mucky tarmac with gravel. Absolutely ideal. I'll tell you something that will surprise you. It can't today because we need to ride on them for longer. Which way, by go the way? Go right, right, mate. Go right now. You will be amazed at just how hard you can ride on the road on them. Uh, I, I mean, when I went to the launch, I was utterly astounded. It felt like a sports touring tyre. It felt, in fact, it felt so good. I thought, right, as soon as we go off road, they're going to be rubbish which was not the case. The only limitation is deep mud. They're not, a mo they're not an enduro tyre, you know, they're not claiming to be. If you're looking for a set of 50-50 tyres for your adventure bike, Dunlop. Or oh, they get Trail Master what? <laughs> Trail Max Raid. Trail Max Raid. Well, there we go, mate. Well, I Enjoyed that. A little bit of a run. It's been nice, coffee. you know. I mean, uh, I think it's another reminder that you don't have to be going everywhere at breakneck yeah. piece yeah. pace with your it's knee more, on the floor. It's more it? sort of taking the scenery. That's in it. Yeah. Enjoy. yeah. Just, it's just nice to be out on a bike, isn't it? Even this, this time of year, especially, it's a bike you can go out. You're not worrying about but, getting but lucky. But in saying that, you have just underlined and extolled the very best virtues yeah, of them. You know, absolutely. you fact you can, as I do with the yeah. V stop, ride it all the year round. Take it on some gentle off-roading. Yeah. Um, just go where you normally wouldn't. wouldn't go and explore. That, uh, that's what it's all about, yeah, isn't it? I mean, yeah. we're, we're not, well, certainly, I'm not into doing hardcore off-road, you know. You just want to go, when the tarmac runs out, have a bike, you can just carry on going around to turn around. Yeah. I think that's what it's about, yeah, isn't yeah. it, more than anything? I, I thought, uh, well, at first I thought you were going to take me somewhere that was likely to have me get into all sorts of bother. <laughs> I wouldn't so, do that. So you. I was relieved you didn't, <laughs> but... I was frustrated that it didn't go on yeah. for longer, you know. And, and even though, how long was the longest one? Half a mile? Half a mile, yeah. Still enjoyed it, yeah. you know. So what would you think, obviously we sort of said riding, the, the Tenere is more capable off-road. Yeah. Even in what we've done today, it, yep. just, it just felt lighter, more connected to it, the to Connected, the good work, yeah. good, good it, work. It, and the V-Storm was a lot softer. Yeah. But if you were to take one of them, 
to Scotland this afternoon. Just on the road? Just on the road. Yeah, V-Strom. V-Strom. If we were going to Scotland to then fool about on some 100-mile uh, yeah, yeah. fire road, yeah. which unfortunately you can't do in Scotland because off-roading is effectively banned, you know. You're is not allowed, really? yeah. There's no really? legal byways, yeah. You have oh, to go wow. on private land. Yeah. Oh, wow. You have to buy it first. Yeah. Buy the land buy the first. Hand and then take your bikes on it. If we were going all the way there, as I did, I rode up to uh, the North York Moors to then do the coast to coast on yeah. a Tenere, and uh, the journey up was fine. It was no bother. I, I thought, you know what, 200 miles sat on this seat for yeah. that long yeah. with that fairing, yeah. I thought it'd be a bit of a choice, it wasn't. It was and right. the Tang Ridge was all right, yeah. it was. Because it's, it's definitely thick, the seat's definitely thinner oh, and big harder, side. Yeah, isn't yeah. it? And the whole bike's thinner That's in the middle. You, you can see that when yeah. they were designing it. Yeah, you know. it was off road in mind. But yeah. a really good, true dual purpose bike yeah. a really true you know a genuine item you know that something that you can do a lot of miles on both on yeah. and off road you know yeah uh john we've praised these bikes a great deal yeah. and appropriately and uh deservingly yeah anything you don't like <sighs> i think there's there's very little to not like. Oh, I think, I think I, you'll find. Oh, you think you've got some, uh, you've got some uh, ideas? Uh, OK, one thing I hate about both of them is the fact that they've got tube tyres. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, and fair, I fair say fair this fair. on yeah. the back of getting a puncher on a V-Strom that was... You the hard man, way, Proper. Even with <laughs> Suzuki's help. Oh, really? There was lots... I, I won't bore you with the details. It took forever to get yeah. sorted. And it... To make matters worse, I would compare that to the minutes yeah. it would have taken. I mean, how much if money it was a tubeless. are you saving by having a rim which, which isn't tubeless? It can't. It can't. Do you know what? Quid up a rim. It can't be any more I, than that. I don't necessarily think it's a cost thing. You know. I mean, I talked to the uh, project leader, lovely yeah. man. Yeah. At uh, the. Japanese fella. Yeah, banjo. Yeah. Banjo son. Uh, really good bloke, hello, hello, hello. And I said to him, uh, why have you decided to put tubes in a, in the V-Strom, you know? Yeah. And he just said, oh, for off-road use. And we kicked it back and forward. And I, I was tempted to say, mate, do you off-road? Or yeah. more to the point, do you fix your punches when yeah. you get them? Because, <laughs> look, at Pavies, I've seen them, uh, the BMW off-road skills place, I've seen those guys puncture their GSs and just be going again yeah, in literally yeah, yeah. five you minutes. Can, if you can find the hole, you can plug it. Exactly, plug really and quickly. go. Yeah, yeah. Plug it that, down. unless you've got levers, a yeah. spare tube or something to yeah, fix it, it with, it's, and... It's, it's bad enough you get a punch on your push bike. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't load a motorbike, can it? You know? Real oversight, yeah, you know? It is. I mean, light as the Tenere is, I don't fancy turning it upside down its handlebars and getting the front wheel out, do you? <laughs> so there we go. If you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to do the old like and subscribe and all of that jazz. Massive thanks to the man for Mossy for joining me. We're going to be doing a bit more together, mate, I think, in the future. We've got some three-way tests coming up on some of the new super sport middleweight so i think me you and greg we could do a bit of a three-way if you enjoyed the video want to see mossy again let me know in the comments but uh, it's been really appreciate your valued input especially as you've ridden, done a lot of miles on these bikes so uh, which i haven't so it's great to get your feedback all i would also like to add is if you don't like me and the prospect of seeing me again is abhorrent let us know keep it to yourself <laughs> <laughs> thanks guys thanks for watching See you next time. Au revoir. Um, do, do, I don't know, do you ever have this, right, this is an aside here. <laughs> do you ever have these moments where you go, where's my bike key? All the time, mate. Constantly. Right, I'm pretty sure Constantly. it's on the... Uh, do you know what? I'm a, it's, it's where's the bike key, where's my phone, where's my yeah. wallet, if you're on the launch, where's my passport? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> where's yeah. my glasses? Yeah. It's all of that. I can see it from here. It's clipped it? on the front of your no, no. strap on the back. You can see the key, I though. See, I can see the strap. I know the key's on okay. it. So all right. It over. Now that. I know that. Fine. I don't have to call the Samaritans. <laughs>